morning, everybody. I'm glad uh, that you came to this internet place to uh, uh, see my presentation. First of all, I would like to thank Sylvia for inviting me to take part uh, in this project. And uh, I, would like, I would like to thank you all for, uh, because it is you who allow us to, to, to make this project. OK, so first of all, uh, I owe you uh, an explanation of what uh, censorship in the title of my paper, Studying Censorship of the VUX Bible 1599 mean. For all those of you who thought that it would be a preventive or interventive censorship in the sense of uh, 20th century uh, totalitarian uh, regimes, uh, well, it's only uh, partially so. Uh, we connect uh, uh, mm, contemporarily, we uh, connect censorship with, with such institutions that would like to control uh, the print so that it is uh, in accordance with an ideolo ideological line of the party or uh, uh, the country. Uh, as it comes to 16th century Jesuit censorship, it's only partially so. Of course, uh, there are aspects of, of uh, censorship who work that way. It is uh, religious control over print so that they are uh, sane and uh, mm, Mm, they're all good with uh, same Catholic faith. Uh, however, the main goal of uh, Jesuit uh, censorship, uh, in case all, also in the case of Wix Bible, is to uh, avoid any errors that a single translator could uh, commit. <laughs> so during my presentation, uh, in the first place, I will provide you with some uh, basic information on uh, Jakub Wujek, only those uh, relevant uh, for, for my subject. Then uh, I will present uh, some basic uh, facts of Vujek's translation of the Bible and uh, some basic context. Then we will move to a conflict uh, between two Polish Jesuits, Jakub Vujek and Stanisław Grodzicki, a conflict that uh, one could say decided the shape uh, of the Vujek's Bible. Then we will move to confessional aspect of the translation and its censorship. By confessional aspect of, of the translation and its censorship, I mean uh, how do the reformational and counter-reformational quarrels uh, mirror in, uh, in the Bible, as well as, uh, as its edition and its paratext, but as well uh, in the text of the scripture itself. And in the very end, I will present you with some puzzling questions which I cannot answer yet, uh, which I uh, encountered during my research. So, who was Jakub Wujek? I think that we all know, since we all are poets uh, in this meeting, that Jakub Wujek was basically a Jesuit and a translator of the Bible. He was born in 1541 in Wągrowiec, a small city near Poznań. Uh, his uh, parents were burghers of, of the city. And he received uh, his primary education uh, in Latin and grammar in a Cisterian school uh, in Wągrowiec. So it was a, a church school. Then he was sent by his parents to Silesia uh, to a university. We, don't, we do not know exactly which uh, school it was. It most probably was Wrocław. There, uh, as Wojek records in his uh, Vocatio, uh, vocation, an autobiography each Jesuit needed to uh, present when he was entering the, <clears throat> the Society of Jesus. And from this uh, autobiography, we also know that he was leaning toward uh, Protestantism. Most probably for a moment, he abandoned Catholic faith. And because of this reason, he was uh, recalled to Poland by his uh, parents who were uh, worrying about him. Uh, somewhere, uh, at, uh, somewhere at that time, uh, he again returned to the Catholic faith after reading Stanisław Hosius' uh, Confessio Fidei. He recalls, uh, Wujek recalls in his autobiography that he moved, uh, that uh, reading this Confessio Fidei moved him so much that uh, he decided to, to return to Catholic faith. In Poland, uh, he continued his studies in Kraków at the Jagiellonian Academy. Uh, under the di direction, among uh, others, of Jan Nietzsche Leopolita. And this fact is very important because 
Jan Nitschlo Polita is believed to be uh, a translator or at least an editor of the uh, Polish Catholic Bible, which appeared in uh, 1561. So it means that at that time when Wujek uh, studied in, uh, in Krakow under, Nitsch, under uh, Jan Leopolita, if Leopolita was a co-author of the Bible, then uh, he must have uh, had worked on, uh, on the Bible at that time. Uh, later Wujek uh, continued his studies in Wien, uh, where he decided to join the Society of Jesus. Of Jesus. Uh, when he uh, was in Wien, he en encountered Jesuits who taught at the university uh, and was very... Mm, mm, well, he, he was amazed with, uh, first of all, the Jesu Jesuit piety, learning and uh, organization. Uh, so he decided to join the society and he continued his studies in Collegium Romanum, in Rome, of course, uh, of the uh, Society of Jesus. So uh, in this part of his biography, we see uh, something that is somewhat typical to many uh, Polish Catholic or counter-reformational uh, actors of, of the period. So we see a genuine uh, spiritual search, genuine uh, concern about uh, faith, piety, and, uh, and the state uh, of affairs in the church. First of all, we see Wojek leaning uh, toward the Reformation and then returning back uh, to Catholic faith uh, to uh, amongst other carry the Tridentine reforms in Poland. Uh, here on this map, uh, you can see uh, marked by red uh, circles or crosses places uh, in, in which uh, Wujek had been. So first of all, we see Wągrowiec in Poznań when he was born and studied, then he moved to Wrocław, then again to Kraków, then to Vienna, then to Rome, then he came back to Poland whereas a uh, very important Jesuit also in, in the institu institutional structures, uh, he led uh, many Jesuit institutions such as colleges in Braniewo or the Academy in Vilna. And you can see also a red uh, circle in uh, Transylvania, in Cluj, Napoca or Koroszwar, where uh, Polish Jesuits uh, <coughs> had a mission uh, ordered by King uh, Stefan Batory. Wujek for uh, three times, each time for several years, was ahead of this mission. And uh, thankfully, uh, his uh, daily schedule from one of the stays in, uh, <coughs> in Transylvania survived. So we know how he worked. And uh, he slept four hours a day. Uh, six or eight hours a day he taught at the college. Again, six or eight hours a day uh, he taught uh, young prince uh, Zygmunt Batory, who was, uh, who was to sit on the uh, prince's throne of, of Transylvania. And uh, for the rest of the time uh, that remained, he prayed, he cared for all the institutional paperwork of, of Jesuit uh, uh, institutions there, and he also translated uh, the Bible at that time. Uh, it is in, important to note that uh, at that time and several decades, uh, and for several more decades, Polish Jesuits had a very serious problem with number of peoples. The networks of scholarship, of colleges, uh, and of other institutions when, were expanding very fast, and they always lacked people to uh, to, to get the job done. As we will see, it will uh, be important later. Uh, so, uh, Wujek, uh, apart from being a very important person, was also a very important writer, and his uh, works include uh, uh, a big number of polemics, such as Judicium or some Catholic's judgment on the confession of San Domiesz. Uh, which was a uh, critic of uh, the Confession of San Domiesz, a joint Confessio Fidei of uh, Polish Evangelicals, Reformed Evangelicals and Czech Brethren. The, confess, uh, the Confession of, of San Domiesz appeared, uh, was printed in 1570, and as, as you can see on the, uh, in my presentation, 
uh, Vujek's response appeared also in 1570. So we we can see a scheme here that uh, Protestants do something and then uh, Jesuits respond swiftly. Uh, but Vujek's work uh, includes also, also moral and spiritual writings such as Life and Teaching of Our Lord Jesus Christ, which he published in Krakow 1597. He signed the foreword to this uh, to this work uh, just a day before his death. So we can see um, a man who is deeply devoted to his order and his faith and works up to the very last day uh, of his life. But uh, apart from the biblical translation, the most important uh, Vujek work was uh, Postilla Catholica. It is sermons for, for every Sunday and every holiday throughout the year. Uh, this print in uh, various parts and uh, modified editions was printed uh, not less than eight times in the course of uh, the last quarter of uh, 16th century, which shows uh, its importance. But uh, uh, a collection of sermons was uh, very important for the Polish Catholics because when uh, Protestants decided to communicate with the faithful in, in Polish in a vernacular language. Uh, it meant that uh, Catholic could do nothing but follow the same the same pattern. So, uh, at the beginning of uh, of Polish Counter Reformation, so to say, uh, it was very important to do what the Protestants had already done, which is publishing. Uh, uh, which is publishing collections of good sermons. But uh, this also includes uh, the Bible translation. What may be interesting uh, for you is the fact that uh, early Jesuit sources from the 17th century uh, mention, uh, when, when they uh, mention about Vujek and his works, uh, they usually mention the Postilla Catholica at the first place and then later uh, the Bible if they mention the Bible at all. So it means that for the Jesuits in the 17th century, the Catholic posty was a much more important work of Vujek than, uh, than the Bible. This is how we uh, arrive at point two, uh, Jakub Vujek's translation of the Bible. So uh, when a congregation of Polish Jesuits gathered in 5084, uh, they decided that it will be uh, good and fruitful to provide uh, Polish Catholics with a good, real, re, good reliable uh, Polish translation of the Bible. Then Wojek was sent to Rome as a procurator of, of the province, a representative, uh, to gain papal approval for the task. This, uh, this was absolutely necessary uh, to uh, carry the work uh, uh, because uh, Providing vernacular translations and printing them was uh, allowed uh, by, by the papacy at that time only in the places where Catholic coexisted with Protestants, such as Poland uh, or England, where uh, the Protestants were ruling. And it is because, as we wrote in his postulates, occurred um, in regard of uh, vernacular uh, religious writings. It is necessary to employ various medicines to save the church of God according to the times. For what would not help a man when he is well can save his life when he is sick. The same metaphor was later included, included in Apparatus Sacer, a foreword to the 1599 edition, uh, 1599 edition of the Bible. Uh, so we can see that uh, when, uh, if there had been no reformation, then it would not be good to translate anything or to write any religious texts uh, in Polish. But now uh, <clears throat> the people are sick because they because some of them tend to follow Reformation. Therefore, uh, we need to provide this this medicine, uh, which is uh, amongst the others uh, Bible translation. Pope Gregory the Thirteenth agreed. Um, to the Jesuits' uh, postulate, uh, under the condition that uh, Vujek's work will be consulted by a Jesuit uh, Jesuit censor commission. It's, it was a very standard pro pro procedure, as I said. Uh, everything needed to, to be controlled in order to avoid any mistakes. But 
also to uh, present uh, Catholics and uh, Jesuits especially as a united front. Uh, one of the most common arguments of, of Polish Catholics against uh, Protestants, and uh, we can say it, uh, it was a very successful argument, argument, was that Catholics stand united. They present one teaching, one structure, one institution, whereas there are many Protestant groups and each other fights with each other and there are always appear new group of protestants who disagree with the previous one so therefore it was absolutely crucial to present catholics as a united front uh, in 1590 jakub wujek uh, finished the translation of new testament however as we will later see it was uh, its print was delayed uh, because of quarrels over censorship where stanisław brodzicki uh, appears but there was also a plague in Krakow, who, which killed uh, some of the Jesuits uh, working on the censorship of the Bible. Finally, in 1593, a first edition of the New Testament appeared, which didn't end uh, quarrels over the translation. Uh, <clears throat> they were most probably raised uh, during the uh, Polish uh, Jesuit congregation of 1593, and as uh, scholars guess, uh, Jakub Wujek and Stanisław Grodzicki were sent as procurators to Rome in order to settle the matters between them. Uh, however, we are not certain uh, if it is the reason why two of them were sent. Anyway, in 1594, there appeared another uh, edition of New Testament, which can be called popular because uh, it was deprived of a very um, huge critical apparatus, which was included in the previous edition. Uh, and there also appeared, uh, appeared an edition of the Psalter. In 1597, Wujek uh, finished his work and died soon after, but it was uh, only the beginning, uh, so to say, of uh, the censorship of his Bible. Uh, a month uh, after his death, uh, um, another Jesuit con congregation of the province took place and uh, they decided uh, to verify the whole, the whole translation once again. Uh, we are not certain whether it was Stanisław Grodzicki who convinced the other Jesuits that uh, this uh, second uh, verification and, and uh, modifications should be done or uh, if it was the fact that Wujek was as i said very influential influential died and could have not uh, defend his uh, translation <coughs> and his uh, program uh, in 1599 there appeared uh, an edition of the whole bible this is how we arrive at point three uh, where i will uh, try to say something about the conflict of Jakub Wujek and Stanisław Grodzicki. Uh, before I do that, it's uh, important to note that uh, sources uh, to reconstruct such quarrels within uh, Jesuit order are very scarce. As I said, uh, Jesuits wanted to present themselves as a united front, Therefore, uh, there could never have been any mention of any conflict between them in a printed work. Uh, so the only sources that uh, say anything directly about the conflict are letters of the uh, Jesuits. One of them is uh, Stanisław Grodzicki's letter to Claudio Aquaviva, uh, general of the order, sent in early 1592. I will uh, quote uh, extensive passages because this is a very important uh, source. As I hear, wrote Grodzicki, Father Jakub Wujek pays attention not as much to the words verba as to the meaning, sensus, which he derives from the Greek text. I am concerned that the worst difficulties will follow. We will not be able to freely counteract the heretics with an argument based on their tampering with the read. They will show us dense this translation of ours. It is important to note two things here. So, first of all, Grodziski doesn't like the fact that Wujek translates the meaning, not the words. I will explain that later. And secondly, uh, Grodziski indirectly accuses Wujek of uh, tampering with, uh, with the Bible, which is indeed a very serious accusation. 
especially if uh, directed toward a colleague from from the order. So uh, <coughs> we move further on. It should be ordered to Vujek not to drift away from the Vulgate, which was approved by the Council of Trent, not even to the extent of Nail's gauge, whenever it only should be possible. He should be ordered to translate word for word properly and not to deliberate if the translation is ornate. I am afraid that this is what he cares about. But if it is truth truthful, by maintaining the grammatica, grammatical meaning, sensus grammaticus, this provided we will, we will be able to de easily defend our translation against the heretics. Translator followed the Vulgate, and we have many good arguments for the, vul for the Vulgate. OK, so here uh, we find the explanation why uh, Grodzicki believed that uh, it is better, uh, or it is the only good way to translate the Bible, to translate the grammatical meaning, uh, the grammatical uh, sense, uh, to follow word after word. Uh, this is uh, a way in which uh, the Catholic uh, translation could be defended. Uh, we have very good arguments to defend the Vulgate. Therefore, if we present a translation which is uh, following the Vulgate word uh, after word, uh, it will be easy to defend it. What's more, in uh, other passages of the letter and in his work, uh, in his work uh, against uh, Protestants, he says that, uh, what also other Catholics say, that one cannot uh, interpret uh, the scripture. Of course, one, one can do it, but uh, the um, ultimate uh, interpreter of the scripture is the church. So it is only the church who can provide us with an authoritative interpretation of the scripture. If one uh, translating the Bible is paying attention to the meaning, not to the words, it, mean, it means that he is uh, giving his words instead of giving the words of the uh, Holy Spirit, which was uh, unacceptable to Grodzicki. Uh, here we can see uh, title pages of uh, Sauter David, of the Psalter of David, uh, Vuyek's print from 1594, and the uh, edition of the, the censored edition of the Bible from uh, 1599. As you can see, they have quite extensive uh, titles, which, um, as it is typical for prints of the era, contain a uh, huge amount of valu val valuable information. Uh, here you can see the English translation of this title. So first, the Psalter of David. Now again, from the Latin, Greek, and Jewish, it is Hebrew, languages translated diligently into Polish and explained with arguments and annotations. And the Bible, that is the books of the Old and the New Testament, according to the Old Latin translation, accepted by the Catholic Church, again diligently translated into Polish, with addition of the Jewish, it is Hebrew, text and the Greek one. And with a Catholic lecture on difficult passages for the protection of the Holy Catholic faith against the heresies belonging to these times. So, uh, we can see that uh, the two Jesuits, it is Jakub Wujek and Stanisław Grodzicki and uh, the Censors Committee he was the head of, uh, proposed two different uh, strategies of translation. Whereas Wujek uh, rendered at the same time Latin, Greek, and Hebrew into Polish, uh, Grodzicki and his commission rendered only Latin into Polish uh, in a word-for-word -word, uh, literal translation, whereas uh, Greek and Hebrew text was added uh, with addition, as it was in the title, to the critical apparatus, so it was presented in the margins of the edition. Uh, some scholars believe, uh, uh, amongst others David Frick, uh, that uh, the conflict between Wojek and Grodzicki can be traced to uh, uh, differing interpretations of the Tridentine decree, and therefore this conflict can reflect uh, <coughs> some quarrels between different Catholic, uh, so to say, camps uh, <coughs> during the uh, Council of Trent. As we read in this uh, decree, the sacred and holy synod ordain ordains and declares that the said old and vulgate edition, 
which by uh, the length and usage of so many years has been approved of in the church, b in public lectures, disputations, sermons and expositions, held as authentic and that no one is to dare or presume to reject it any uh, to reject it under any pretext whatever. So uh, as, as, as we know, um, Catholics uh, were not, uh, well, there were differences between Catholics which were reflected during long and uh, <clears throat> during long uh, Council of Trent. And many of the Tridentist decrees had to, um, couldn't uh, have been too strict or too precise because they would uh, not be accepted by some of the camps I mentioned. And in this case, you can see that there is no mention, no mention about uh, Greek and Hebrew sources. It is neither said that one can use them, neither that uh, they cannot be used. Uh, and so we can see that uh, actually it may be a good idea to trace the conflict between Grodzicki and uh, Wojek to this decree. And this thesis is supported by a short sentence in a, <clears throat> a source from 17th century uh, history of, of one of the Jesuit institutions in Kraków, uh, written by Jan Wielewicki, a Jesuit. In Poznań, fathers of the Society of Je Jesus verified the mentioned Bible according to the prescription of the Council of Trent. Uh, when, uh, uh, well, the preliminary stage of my, uh, of my work was a collation of uh, available editions, the original editions of New Testament of 1593 and 1594, and also the Psalter of 1594. Uh, together with the 1599 editions. So basically what I did was marking all the differences between editions and analyzing them uh, with the Latin text. Uh, this is, uh, you can see it in the uh, columns C to I. Uh, whilst in uh, columns G, J, K and L, you can see my notes, which allow me to search the document uh, very quickly and uh, mm, work on the material. Uh, so the case of uh, typical uh, censors change introduced into the, the Bible of 1599 uh, is uh, are the verses 4 and 5 of Psalm uh, 131. So as we are our Poles, uh, I will ask you to, to read the, the, the Bible in Polish. Uh, but I will discuss the, the English text. So, as, as we can see, um, okay, first of all, I will read it, the 1590, 1594 version. I will not allow sleep unto my eyes and snooze unto my eyelids. I will not give any rest to my temples until I find a place for the Lord, a home for the God of Jacob. Uh, whereas in 1599 we read, Jeśli przypuszczę sen na oczy moje i drzymanie na powieki moje, i odpoczynek na skronie mojej, aż znajdę miejsce Panu, przybytek Bogu Jakub. Okay, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I, I read the Polish one, okay. If I uh, allow to sleep unto my eyes and snooze unto my eyelids and the rest on my temple and, until I, I find a place for the Lord, a tabernacle for the God Jacob. So we can see that these two uh, versions are totally different. In, in Wojek's original text of 1594, we'll see that the psalmist will not do this and do that until he finds a place for his God, whereas uh, the version of 1599 is not very communicative and we don't know actually what the, the point is. It's somewhat mystical and obscure. If we see uh, to the text of the Vulgate, uh, we will realize that the censor's mm, version is a translation word for word rendering the Latin. Uh, si dedero somnum oculis meis, et palpebris meis dormitationem, et requiem temporibus me meis, donec inveniam locum domino tabernaculum deo Jacob. Uh, if we would have looked at the Greek text, we would realize that it's uh, very uh, similar to the Vulgate. However, the Greek construction of, of uh, which was used uh, could be literally translated as uh, if I allow sleep onto my eyes. However, uh, the proper grammatic meaning uh, of, of using uh, 
uh, such pronoun which was used with the future tense is counterfactive. So it means that I will not do something. In this case, I will not allow sleep onto my eyes until I find a place for the Lord. So we can see that Vujek referred to the Greek text, which was then by the censors changed to a actually copy of a Latin. Here is one more one more thing worth mentioning, uh, which is one of my uh, f favorite uh, census changes in the Psalter. We can see that the Psalmist is seeking uh, a house for the God of Jacob. However, in Latin, uh, in, in the Vulgate, uh, the name Jacob uh, in every grammatic case looks uh, looks the same. Uh, it is because of a uh, hmm, hmm, grammatical rule that uh, nomina barbarea uh, ver hebraica in declinabilia sunt, which means that Hebrew and, uh, and, bar and names from barbarian language uh, are not inflected. So whereas in uh, Vujek text we have God of Jacob, Bogu Jakubowemu, in the censor's text we have uh, God Jacob, Bogu Jakub. I don't know if it could have been uh, misleading for anyone, but uh, uh, nevertheless, it seems uh, quite strange. Uh, on this uh, beautiful diagram I, I uh, <coughs> prepared, you can see uh, a green uh, huge circle, uh, which, uh, well, the, the, the circles uh, in its whole represent the whole text of the scripture. And only some part, uh, which is natural, not natural of the uh, Vujek translation, were modified uh, by the censors. It was about 66% verses of the Psalter and about 50% uh, in the Evangelis. However, not uh, all the uh, censors changes can be explained uh, uh, in the context of the translation strategy they proposed. So, the Mm, orange circle uh, symbolizes a text which was modified uh, according to the translation strategy. strategy. It is the mm, Vujek readings which were derived from the Greek and or Hebrew text uh, were replaced, re replaced with a literal translation of the Vulgate. However, we can see also a red circle and this is of uh, most interest to me. Uh, this red circle represents uh, passages which were modified, but uh, that modif but which modifications cannot be explained uh, by the censor's, censor's strategy. So we can suspect that uh, they could have something else in mind or wanted to achieve something else than simply uh, than simply accordance with Vulgate. And this is how we arrive at point four, confessional aspect of the translation and this censorship. <laughs> so, uh, as wrote Marcin Wasch, one of the Jesuit uh, censors and probably author of Apparatus Sacre, the foreword to the whole Bible, we were forced to translate the Bible by an immeasurable perfidy of the heretics who harshly violated the word of God so that the read seemed to support them. Thus everyone can see that it was indeed necessary to uncover those forgeries for the admonition of the faithful and to counteract such malefic errors and to bring the holy writ so harshly violated and corrupted by the heretics to its sincerity and to provide and confer, confer, confirm it with same explanations in order to clarify it against the heretic evasions and to clearly show that the holy writ in its whole supports us who by the grace of God, are Catholics. So, what Marcin Wasch uh, refers to here uh, is the critical apparatus I mentioned several times before, which consists of uh, <coughs> several parts. On the left margin of the page, you can see concordations. These are uh, corresponding passages of the scriptures in other places. On the right margins on the top, you can see supplemental readings or explanations. So uh, if there was a possibility of different translation uh, <coughs> or Vujek abandoned literal translation, uh, then uh, on the margin, he presented some supplemental readings or explanations. In this case, we read that uh, 
uh, Christ wanted to gather the children of Jerusalem like a hen gathers her nest, but on the margin uh, we have that uh, it also can be translated as like a hen gathering her little chickens. Uh, <laughs> Then we have different readings in uh, textual sources. So in every case uh, where there was found a difference between Latin, Greek, Hebrew, and Syriac uh, texts, uh, Syriac in case of, of the Old Testament and Hebrew, uh, Syriac in the case of New Testament and Hebrew in the case of Old Testament, Testament there uh, these, uh, then these uh, <coughs> different readings were uh, signalized on the margin. Uh, and there, then the last part of, of the paratext on the margin are arguments, which are small, uh, I don't know, summaries or slogans uh, telling us about the content of what is uh, in the main body of the text. Uh, in, in the middle, marked with a square, you can see teachings and admonitions. These are is the most extensive uh, part of, of this critical apparatus, which uh, contains uh, <coughs> explanations why given uh, passages were translated in such a way and not another, but also it contains an explanation of Saint Catholic, uh, of Saint Catholic teachers against the, the Protestants. Uh, a good example of such uh, commentary is the one to Revelation 13:17, the image of the beast. Those who do not want to give the proper worship to the image of Christ the Lord at that at that time, at the time of the apocalypse, will kneel before Antichrist's image and see that as the as the making and honoring of the image of Antichrist was not against Antichrist's worship and his honor honor but indeed in favor of it as that image of Nabuchodonosor and so the worshiping of Christ the Lord's image is the worship of Christ the Lord and it usurps none of his worship and honor as foolishly this centers things. So this commentary basically does two things. Uh, on the one hand it ex explains Catholic uh, teaching on the images. So when we worship an image of Christ the Lord uh, we actually worship the Christ, uh, we actually worship Christ himself because image represents Christ. And at the same time, we have an attack on the, on the Protestants that they don't want to worship the image of Christ, but they surely will worship the image of Antichrist. It's not very polite, but such were the uh, 16th century uh, polemics. However, uh, <clears throat> the critical apparatus is not the only place in, in the Free X Bible in which uh, mm, confessional aversion was uh, projected uh, because uh, it was included also in the in the Holy Scripture itself. itself. So, uh, <clears throat> as we can see in uh, Psalm 63, uh, free, uh, in the text of 1594, those saved me from the gathering of the wicked, from the multitude of those who do iniquities. Uh, and in 1599, we read uh, almost identically, those saved me from the congregation of the wicked, from the multitude of those who do iniquities. iniquities. The only change here is changing of the word zebranie, gathering, toward zbur, congregation. Uh, I, I believe that both of these words are quite good equivalence of a uh, sorry uh, latin word, word uh, conventus however uh, it's not uh, <laughs> in accordance with the paradigm of a literal translation word for word such principles uh, <laughs> include the tendency or a postulate to translate one uh, latin in this case word with one polish word so if we have a word conventus, uh, <coughs> in every place uh, in the Psalter or New Testament, it should be translated in the same way. Of course, we know that uh, it is impossible to do so. However, this change is, is very interesting. 
Why is that so? Because uh, when uh, Protestants appeared in Poland, they decided to call themselves differently than Catholics in an aspect of an institution. So, whereas Catholics called themselves Kościół, which is a church uh, in the sense of ecclesia, the Protestants said, no, no, the church the, uh, is uh, the, the word Kościół, the word church you use, is referring to a temple, to a building, but the true church of Christ, the ecclesia, is a congregation of faithful. So to describe their, uh, their uh, well, their churches, they use the word zbur, congregation, in contrast to, uh, to the word uh, kościół, uh, which is church. So uh, if we look into the whole text of the Psalter, we will see that the uh, word zbur there appears only in negative contexts and as equivalent uh, of many different Latin words. So I believe it is clear that uh, aim of this change is to build negative connotations with uh, Protestant uh, congregations. The other case of this practice uh, is uh, the word spero and its derivatives and, uh, sim and words of similar meaning. Uh, so mm -hmm. there were two main ways uh, to translate this spero from Latin into Polish in the 16th century. First, per, uh, first one was ufać, to trust in something or to trust somebody, uh, to trust in somebody, or mieć nadzieję, to hope or to pin one's hope uh, in uh, something or somebody. What is the difference? Well, the difference is that the translation ufać, to trust in something somebody, has very strong connections with fiducia, which is the sola fide principle, uh, <coughs> which was very important for, for reformed evangelicals, the most influential pro Protestant group in Poland at that time. Uh, and uh, it was to trust in one's salvation, uh, in the sense to be sure of one's salvation. Whereas Catholics said that one cannot be uh, sure of, uh, of his salvation, but he, sh he should hope that uh, he will be... Uh, Safe because hope is one of the three main uh, three main virtues. Uh, what might be surprising, we see mieć uh, nadzieję to hope and ufać to trust in something somebody, roughly equally distributed in the Psalter in the Lopolita Bible. However, uh, later in the Bible of Brest, the uh, translation of uh, Polish Reformed Evangelicals. Uh, we can see that ufać, to trust in something, uh, in somebody, uh, is preferred by them. And then, strangely, uh, we see that in Psalter, Wujek uses uh, roughly, uh, uses the, the, these two options in roughly equal proportion, proportions, but some more, uh, but for several more, more times, he translates uh, spero as ufać, whereas censors of the Psalter, changed almost every case where uh, Spero was translated uh, by Wujek as ufać, to trust in something somebody, to uh, mieć nadzieję, to hope, to pin one's hopes in something somebody. And I will show you one case in which, one of uh, a few cases in which the uh, censors decided to um, leave uh, uh, one of, of Wujek's uh, translations of this word as to trust. Uh, we read in uh, 1594, see, see a man who did not make God his counselor, but trusted in his vast riches and fortified himself in his vanity. And I, as a fertile oil in the house of God, trusted in God's mercy. Uh, if we look at the Vulgate text now, the, there is no need to re re read the whole of it, but we see that in both of these uh, sentences I bolded, uh, in both of these parts I bolded, there is uh, a form of word spero used. So basically here we see a counterposition of uh, spero in a bad thing, which is to trust, as we are translated, in vast reaches, in speed of your horse, in the sharpness of your sword and so on, but it's good to trust in God's mercy. However, as we read in the censored version of 1599, 
See a man who did not make God his counselor, but trusted in a hoard of his riches, and he overcame in his vanity. And I, as a fertile oil in the house of God, hoped in God's mercy. It is a very good example of the, the, the practice the censors wanted to do, uh, which is to um, make Catholic uh, vocabulary very precise and at the same time opposed to the Protestant one. So here, uh, in this fragment, we have the same word, spero, translated uh, in two different ways to support the counter-distinction. And then one side of the counter-distinction, we have, uh, so to say, more Protestant than a Catholic word, which has negative connotations. And on the other side, we have a Catholic word with uh, positive uh, connotations. And uh, it's clear that it's not... Uh, uh, that it's not an effect of uh, of of the translation strategy that censors um, employed. It's contradictive, actually, to their strategy. Uh, now we move to the last part. Uh, these are, as I said earlier, the questions that uh, I wonder uh, that that are very puzzling for me uh, and cannot be answered at the current. Uh, with the current state of my research. However, I hope that I will be able to solve these mysteries. As I said, uh, there are very little sources to reconstruct uh, directly uh, the quarrels within the Jesuit order. However, one of them is a letter uh, of Ludovico Maselli, who was a, a visitator, a Roman representative in the province of Poland. A letter he sent to Claudio Aquaviva, it is the general of the order, in 1593. This uh, letter was a response to a demand from General to explain to him the situation after Grodzicki accused Wujek of doing unacceptable things with the translation. So he recalls, when I arrived from the city, Rome, to the province of Poland, I came upon the New Testament under the printing press. One sheet had already been finished without a consent of the censors appointed by the father Paolo Campano, head of the Polish province. Not a long time later, it had been noted that the condition of Popes Gregory XIII and thy permission to translate the Bible have not been kept in the translation. Okay, so what happened here? I, I have no idea. It basically means that Wojek in 1590, uh, in August or September, when Maselli arrived to uh, Poland, tried to uh, print the, test the New Testament himself without uh, consultation with the censors. What's even more surprising, if we mm, look at, at the historical facts, we see that one or two months earlier, there was a Jesuit congregation of, uh, of the province in which Wojek took part. So uh, I believe that uh, either he did not inform anyone that he finished the translation or he wishes and he wishes to print it, it uh, either he uh, either printing the translation was not allowed by the censors. In any case, still, uh, he printed, he started printing it uh, at his own will, which is very strange and shows how deep this conflict was. Uh, in either, uh, well, if Wojek didn't tell anyone uh, that uh, he is going to print the translation, he must have suspected that some uh, will not like it. In, in either cases, it's still very intriguing. And uh, the second puzzling fact may not be that, uh, that spectacular, but it's still very interesting and strange. And is connected with the 17th century editions of the New Testament and of the Psalter. The whole uh, of the Vujek Bible, which is the Old Testament and the New One, was not reprinted until the late 18th century. However, the, in the 17th century, there have been four editions of the New Testament and Psalter. Uh, as I said, uh, Polish Jesuits at the beginning of, the, of their work in Poland had, ve had a very big problem with uh, with number of, of people. Uh, so uh, we see them in the 1590s uh, using huge resources, which is sending five uh, very well qualified theologians they always lacked to uh, to verify 
Buyak's trans translations. And what happens in the 17th century, in the 1606, just seven years after the censored edition was translated? Well, each of the New Testament edition and Psalter edition in the 17th century repeats the text of uncensored Bible. Okay, it's very strange. Uh, we, we could suspect that the printer had uh, printed uh, the, um, uh, the answers or text on his own will. We see marked with this, uh, <coughs> with this green, uh, marked with green, a formula in Polish, starszych, which means uh, by the approval of the elders, basically a Catholic hierarchy. If the printer was repeating a previous edition, he could have also used this formula without consulting uh, with the hierarchy. It would be very strange and dangerous for him. He would, could have some problems, uh, but it would be possible. But to do it for the four times, six times in the, in the 17th century, it becomes even more puzzling when we realize that in uh, late second decade of the 17th century, Polish Jesuits received a special privilege from the King uh, uh, Zygmunt III that no printer could print uh, works of Jesuit authors without the Jesuit hi hierarchy content. So in uh, the New Testament edition of 1521 or 1522 and uh, 1621 uh, or 1622 and in 1647, uh, we find on the last page this, uh, this, this small document on the right page, uh, on the right side of, of the presentation. Uh, which is a document that uh, saying that this particular printer, Andrzej Piotrkowczyk, was allowed by uh, a Jesuit provincial, the head of Jesuit province in Poland, to print uh, to print uh, New Testament translated into Polish by Jakub Wojek and also all, all other works of uh, Jakub Wojek. So here, uh, just some 20 years after the, the whole mess with the censorship, which consumed really huge resources and a huge amount of time, we see that the head of the Polish province himself allows to print, uh, allows to print uh, the uncensored version. Now I have no idea what does it mean, uh, but I hope I will find out one day, so stay tuned. Thank you very much for your attention. Here uh, you see my uh, email address. If you should have any remarks or questions concerning bibliography, feel free to contact me. And now, as I believe, it is time for you to ask your questions here. Thank you very much once more.